What is up all you Party Pond people out there? Chris from Team Aquascape. We're coming back at you with an incredible rehab project of an existing Aquascape ecosystem pond that was built probably 15 years ago and we are making it bigger, better, and bestest than what they currently have. You guys ready for this transformation? Let's go. We are gonna build a pondless waterfall. The easiest way to learn something is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. We appreciate you guys tuning in. Like I said, we are working on a renovation project today. I am standing on the back deck of this gorgeous suburban home. This outdoor living space is absolutely incredible. We had different layers, textures, all that stuff. I love the composite deck. The whole back side of the house focuses back on this party space and this. This is an existing kind of 16 by 21 pond. We've got a 2500 Biofalls skimmer. There used to be a gazebo here. And they're gonna actually put a new one back here. But we are back here making this pond much, much, much bigger and adding wetland filtration and intake bay, all the bells and whistles to make this pond the forever pond for this backyard. Well, I say forever, but you know how that goes with some of our customers, but really, really blessed to be on this project. They are an incredible family of customers. I couldn't be more happy and excited to get this project going. So, so cool. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this pond turn at 25 by 25. We're gonna add a wetland filter back over here. We're gonna have a intake bay area back around the backside of the gazebo. We're going to drop one of the legs of the gazebo in on a cut granite step. We're still going to have cut granite steppers coming through the pond here. We're going to take out all of the landscape and give the homeowners a clean slate to replant once we're all done. So first things first, get all the green waste out of here, get that demo so we have a nice open area to work and then we're going to really get to digging and then we'll show you the layout of the pond at that point. end of the crab apples well almost we still have to get the root balls out we're gonna get these steppers out of here we're gonna bring the machine over and just start scraping all this landscape back get all the green stuff out of here like i said and then we'll start getting the whole pond demo love it It is day two out here. Kind of stopped the video yesterday, just talking about the layout and the design. But we already started digging the wetland filter back behind me. So you've got Chris down here, just kind of cleaning up the hole. You can see we've got the trough for the circle centipede set up down there. We've got 15 small aqua box going in here for our wetland filter. Hey, Jack. What's up, guys? He's back, everybody. Yeah. He's back. We've got a good day ahead of us. We're just kind of cleaning up the excavation so we can put our fabric and liner in and we're not having to redo any Thing or do any double work, you'll notice our square hole here. This is where those 15 small Aquabox snorkel centipede are going, but we also went ahead and cut out even more to compensate for the boulders as we rock in over top of that wetland filter. So you can see we've got a little shelf all the way around and through here that boulders will end up sitting, finding that edge. We're gonna be running stepping stones across this wetland filter. We've got those out here today. So the goal is to get this wetland filter done, get the pond dug, 
get the berm built, all that stuff. Maybe we'll do a little bit of retaining wall back over there behind the berm. Um, but I'd love to get the pond dug, get this finished so we can kind of work our way out of this space as the day progresses, as the project progresses. My objective is to kind of work our way this way. So just wanted to show you how we excavated out the wetland filter. The reason we did this kind of organic shape and this shelf up over through here. Hope that makes sense to you. As we go through and start rocking all this area, we'll go back and reference why we dug the hole the way that we did, so on and so forth. So big, big stuff happening today. Super excited. We've got both jacks back out here. They were working on a project, finishing up a project they started yesterday. So that's good to have them. We've also have the two guys, Matt and Jeremiah from Matera Waterscapes out of Denver, Colorado. So glad to have them. We've got a full crew out here today. And I forgot to tell you, we moved 26 tons of boulders off the street yesterday in about 45 minutes to end the day yesterday. So now all of our rock went from being staged out on the street to now being staged in the backyard, which is great. set up. I know you guys have all seen it in the video, but for some of you, this may be the first time. We got our snorkel down there, and then there's our centipede that runs out underneath our aqua blocks. Down through there, we've got a couple small cobbles in here just to fill that void space and to prevent these things from rocking back and forth. But it's very important that you dig the trough for the centipede at the correct depth so that these small aqua blocks fit right down on top and aren't walking around, moving back and forth. This is pretty good. And through here, you can see Jack over there filling with cobbles, that area behind the snorkel and around the snorkel. Keep that thing nice and vertical and straight up and down. It's not leaning back or forward. We do pitch our centipede slightly backwards so that all the water when we do a clean out on this drains down to the bottom of that snorkel making the cleanup very very easy. Juan's gonna go ahead and cut one of our small aqua blocks into thirds and he's gonna go ahead and put a small aqua block a piece of it right there right there and then we'll fill between with some cobbles. That's where that pipe the pipe coming up is going to be the pipe that's running from our SLD two to five that will sit over in the intake area and it will be fed by a two inch line but it's a three inch intake down at the bottom of the snorkel so we're gonna go ahead and just run three inch and then we'll end up running two inch tying it in somewhere up here so here's how Ryan's cutting that aqua block to fit and you can see how he put that third of an aqua block down in here on this side of the pipe and what he'll do is he'll run that one right there and then we'll just fill around with gravel and cobbles and just lock everything together nice and tight all right so here is the first layer of strata. This is that anywhere from four to eight inch cobbles that we put down here. We're gonna put in some smaller, like three inch stuff, just to kind of lock this stuff together a little bit better and to prevent that smaller gravel from getting down into the aqua blocks. Areas like this can become a problem where that little gravel can channel down and clog these aqua blocks. We don't want it too tight in here, just because we still want to allow for the water flow, but also that pore space in between. That's why it's so important to have the different layers and the different sizes of strata going from big to medium to small in through here because different microorganisms are going to live at the different levels of the strata. So just important that we have all the different layers in there to really maximize the effect of this biological filter. So we've got to just pepper in a few more small ones. Then we're going to come in here with our larger gravel, the pond gravel that we'll put in. You'll see that in a second. And then we'll come over the top with some of that really fine three eighths to three quarters red flint that's more of a decorative gravel over the top. And then we'll go ahead and start rocking in this area, setting our steppers, so on and so forth. So good shape. Good shape. Some of you out there may not know, like Jack, may not know what strata is. Right. It's like the third time that I've lost it. The okay. media in which bacteria mm -hmm. thrive and colonize. There you go. Bingo. There you go. So see, Matt did, I didn't even need to explain it. Matt did, but he is correct. The strata is whatever surface the bacteria is colonizing on, that's what the strata is. Whatever that media is, whether it's the rock and gravel, if you're using wood elements, you know, if there's biological activity had, happening on those pieces, really anything that has living, breathing life occupied on it um, is strata. So great stuff there. Good question, Jack, for putting yourself out there you know, and asking I'm just, the question. Like, I'm trying to get better, you know, that's all I'm trying to do. Good, there's a lot of work left. So I know there is, that's why. I gotta start somewhere. 
good. You're doing great. You no, know, it feels good to work with you again, but I'm just, I know it's gonna change by the end of the day. Yeah, by the end of the day, that's, that's a long way away. Yep. All right, so here's Jackie. It's kind of filling in some of these smaller gaps and crevices and peppering in some of the smaller stuff just over the top. And then we're gonna come in here with, with some of the smaller stones. So excellent, excellent stuff. Keep plugging away and then we'll see gravel in there. everyone digging away while well, Udi is just planning out our burn top we have our pond 99% dug out we just got a few areas that we have to dig out right now we are over here digging away for our wall so usually like what you guys normally see is we come in and we build a trough inside a liner well with this case since our wall is going to be above our deepest point of the pond which is down here this is at three and a half feet this is at two feet we have to compensate for our one course that's going to be below gravel depth so what we're doing is we're coming in here we're going down five to six inches deep from this point here all the way around roughly 12 feet to where Jeremiah sits over there and this is going to account for our jet line and then our base material for our wall and then our one course is going to sit on top of here and then that way we can gravel it and then that gravel mark will be at two feet of water depth and then we'll be able to go straight up with the wall back side of our wall will be our retention for all our chips and all our base material for the wall What do you think? We got the liner in, <laughs> just in the nick of time. What are we looking at over here? Let's see. It looks, it's a... Uh, yeah, it's spotty. Eh, eh, rain's coming though. I think we made the right call getting the liner in. That is definitely enough liner. It's a 40 by 50 roll. We have probably an extra 10 feet back over there. We went down three and a half feet as our total depth down at that deep section. But a majority of this pond is dug out about 27 inches with about two feet of water depth consuming that. We've got our wetland filter over here. We've got everything tarped a little after four o'clock, but I think this is probably going to be a good place to stop today. Great progress in two days. We got Goes a, here. that's right. It's because, where's he at? Where is he at? There he is. Right we have Jack here. Of course, we have the even better Jack, Danley, but we also have the better Chris Zeschke than myself. So that is true. Jack, what does it feel like? I mean, I know how I feel, but being like the lesser of the two names, right? I'm all, definitely the lesser Chris. All and, I know is that I'm better than you, so that's all that matters. And he's right, folks. See, he's right. I'm always right. He's right. He is better than me, but he's still not better than Jack or the other Chris, the better Chris. But they're they're in a different ranking than we are, so as long as I'm better than him, I'm fine. I don't know. You let us know what Tell you think in the, in the comments. comments. <laughs> well, we'll be back tomorrow. And if this is the end of the episode, thanks for watching. Stay tuned until next episode and you see this pond really rocking and rolling.